in here in November 2010, and it's taken up most of our life ever since. A lot of people wouldn't have anything to do with the house. They think it's haunted. They think it's uh, too creepy. They think it should have been torn down way back when. They walk by, oh, I can't believe you bought that. But the house got a bum rap, no question about it. <laughs> The sight of a case that shocked the world. The most frightening, most infamous, most notorious home in all of Sacramento. It's almost like a landmark in this neighborhood. It's an address that still attracts plenty of attention. I don't know if I'd sleep well <laughs> a night in that house. I sure wouldn't want to buy it or live there. <laughs> actually came down here looking at the house next door. But this one was for sale. It had not shown up online or anywhere that where we'd been looking. The house was charming, yeah. and it met my needs because I wanted to bring Mom down and have her close. She lived way up in the in the sticks and was getting old and decrepit like us. And um, she... Uh, see this. <laughs> yeah. So we wanted to get her down here. So we called the realtor. And... As I pull up the property, I see notorious history. I see attached document. Um, so looking at that, he, he says, Dorothea Puente, a murder home. And I was like, oh, no way. You know, I was like, are you kidding me? <laughs> so I give him a call and so I said, Barbara, Tom, something I got to tell you about the house. Anytime you mention 1426 F Street, that term F Street sticks in everybody's mind. And that's because of what had occurred there in 1988. Sacramento homicide detectives say they are digging up what are, they believe is the remains of at least one body at a location in downtown Sacramento tonight at 1426 F Street. My name is John Cabrera. I'm a retired police sergeant, former homicide detective for the city of Sacramento. I spent 15 years as a homicide detective. And in those 15 years, I had seen many victims of homicide, but none of those compared to what I found when I was digging through the yard. Crews pulled a fifth body from a shallow grave today. Wrapped in a sheet, police couldn't tell if the victim was male or female. The woman believed responsible for the deaths is 71-year-old Dorothea Montalvo Puentes, who had a previous record of stealing from the elderly after doping them. Authorities now suspect the woman killed at least five of the tenants and continued to cash their social security checks. It was just incredibly shocking seven bodies were placed in this yard strategically one of the victims no head hands feet it, it was incredible that this individual this little old lady could be responsible for all these deaths i was hooked and it was cheap so yeah. <laughs> like, are you sure? You know it's a murder home? <laughs> so it was kind of fun, like, yeah, we want to run off around the house. The infamous Sacramento house where the F Street murders took place has sold, believe it or not. I read mysteries all the time, and it's like, uh, you know, it's like creepy in a good way to me. We do think we can overcome the stigma. Nobody was surprised on my side of the family. I don't know about Barbara's. Uh, no, I think they think we're a little weird anyway. We met online, actually. On Match.com. Match.com. There's an advertisement yeah. for Match.com. Yeah, so. Screw you, you harmony. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, my previous wife had passed away, and... and uh, he had nothing to do with it. We communicated via email for a long time before we actually met each other. She juggled me between the, me and one other guy. She was trying to decide Lots which one. Lots of other guys. Lots of other guys, yeah. Hundreds. <laughs> uh, and then once, once we met, I think we just kind of went from there. It was a good match. We got married <clears throat> in 2005. I, I was stuck with them at that time. She's been working for Kaiser, well, you got like 40 years now or something. And uh, I dapple in writing. I have a million really, really good first chapters. I had one story published in a magazine back in 94. But these days, I don't do much of anything except I drive my wife to work. He's my chauffeur. I'm her chauffeur, yeah. This is Barbara and me as bobbleheads. And you can tell that's Barbara because she's looking at me admiringly. 
I broke the second one, dropped it. So I have made these little peas so everybody can see that I'm a pea brain. After the investigation, you know, the house had this lingering stigma. There were lots of onlookers. Everybody had to see this house where this horrors took place. And when you look around the country and you see where a lot of these horrific crimes have taken place, they tear them down. John Wayne Gacy's house was completely torn down and remained an empty lot for years. What's different about 1426 F Street is that this is a historical home which cannot be torn down. This house will remain forever. The house looked horrible back then. It was in bad shape. This is the bottom floor, kitchen. Downstairs was like a cave. It wasn't spooky by any means, but it was dark and very dusty, very dirty. We're probably going to die fairly early on from asbestosis <laughs> and, or whatever you call it, <laughs> mesothelioma. We'd spent the whole summer remodeling, working nonstop. Gutted the house and made it as beautiful as we could. We did a lot. Barbara's dream was to make people forget what the house had been and, and the history of it. I liked a mosaic. To me, that's my meditation. So I did a mosaic on the sides of the stairs and a Superman out in front. I just thought we could put a fresh coat of paint on and make people forget. But people would walk by, oh, I can't believe you bought that, and oh, you know, oh, I, there's ghosts in there and all that stuff. First Halloween, there was a seance out in front. We had some kind of weird thing out there by the fence. <laughs> yeah. We looked out, there's like a bunch of people in here. Ooh, ooh, Scared uh, me to death. Yeah. The media wouldn't find any excuse to talk about the house. They called it the death house and all that stuff. People would say, I can't believe anybody would buy that. And we're just kind of going, ooh. Yeah, it was not going to change. And, and you might as well just feed it. So I fed it. This was actually the first sign I put up at all. Picture of the house again, another engraving of the house, and it says, it was the awful, awful woman that did it. Don't blame me, it signed the house. I also made a little sign that said, it was the bitch that did it. That ultimately ended up going inside because I was afraid children might be offended. There's an iconic photo of Dorothea Puente after the first body has been found. So I dressed the mannequin to look like that photograph. We keep her getaway money in the purse. Um, it actually blew out all over the yard the other day. This is Barbara's mom's latest wig, which is kind of a pixie cut. She just donated this the other day. Oh, boobs are sagging. Dorothea would drag them down here and out into the yard. So I put a sign up here that says slide, thump, slide, thump, slide, thump. It's tasteless. Most of my stuff is. So, yeah. This is mine. This is our police line shower curtain. Barbara wants another. She has stopped me. I have. I, I He's wanted gone to... a little bit too far, or wants to go a little bit too far at times. You told my mom we had a spot in the backyard I for her. told her we had a spot in the backyard for her. Easily the most popular sign. It says, Trespassers will be drugged and buried in the yard, um, and they will be. It's no joke. The old Sacramento Old City Association contacted us and said they were going to do a tour of the area and if we were interested in doing it. I wanted to see how people reacted to the home and, and if they were going to accept what we did. I thought it was a good idea to let people in and kind of demystify it a little bit. We must have had a couple thousand people. There was one woman who worked for the DA's office back then that was highly offended. But other than that, everybody else thought it was funny. People liked what we did. John Cabrera, who had arrested her, he had not been here for many, many years. I purchased a ticket, and I became part of the entourage that would come and look through the house. And it was nice going back in and looking at the area that I had seen before with grim eyes and looking at it you know, with bright eyes now saying, everything has changed, everything is new, and it's nice in here. He was so tickled with what we did that he ultimately came over and hung out with us and told us his stories. And we've become friends. 
we seem to be sort of celebrities. It's not like we're recognized on the street or anything, but tours come by here all the time. They stop across the street, and there'll be 20 people over there looking at the house, and there's never a day somebody doesn't come by and take a picture. At one point, I thought, okay, this has run its course. This is actually kind of tacky. So I put it away, and people say, hey, where are the signs? I want to see the signs. Do you wish it was just Tom and Barbara's house? I like, Barbara probably does. I, I like the attention. <laughs> This is a house that's been reborn. Yeah, seven people were buried in the yard. Yes, this was a house of horrors, but it no longer lingers. We've really put our heart and soul in here. And when you do that, you take some pride in, in what you have and what you've done. It's fun and it's ours. This is my latest sign. I did this after the uh after the tour, it says it is not that house anymore. People love coming by the house. The whole darkness thing is gone. They don't come by and go, ooh, they come by, oh. You know, humor is great for healing.